So we start um, the application. Select back from the main menu and click on new. The untitled deck is created. Um, so as a as a tip, um, with Granule you always want to save your new deck to a file right away. So you, for that, select Untitled and right click to bring the pop-up menu and click on Save. The um, Save Deck as dialog has Browse for Other Folders expansion button. Uh, this button lets you to select uh, a folder on your hard drive to save your deck of cards. So um, my default folder is C, uh, my stuff, English, words. Uh, let's change the deck name to GRE-05. Uh, note uh, that the deck file extension is .dkf and this is how Granule recognizes its deck by um, extension internally. Uh, click on save button to save an empty deck to a disk file. Granule is optimized for a day-to-day -day workflow this way, all things that you do infrequently um, are hidden from you, and all things that you do daily are right under your fingertips. Since a studying deck is a day-to-day -day activity, when we select the deck from the list and double-click on it, uh, we are naturally presented with deck player window where all the learning occurs. So. Um, So this is the main dialog where all the learning occurs. Um, our deck, however, is empty and uh, first we need to populate it with some cards. Uh, remember that infrequent activities are hidden away from you, uh, not to get in the way of your learning process. So it takes some clicks to get to the uh, dialog which lets us to, to enter uh, new cards. Uh, for that, uh, to add a new card, we click on the menu button and select Edit Deck from it. So this is the menu button, and this is Edit Deck. Uh, this takes us to the Deck View window where you manage your cards. Uh, to add a new card, you add on a plus sign icon. So this is plus sign, and this is Card View dialog. Uh, which allows you to add new cards. So let's go quickly over the facets of this dialog to familiarize ourselves with all the available controls. Um, the front field is right here. This is where you add the front text of your card. Uh, the back field is uh, for the answer and uh, the example field um, is where you want uh, to write uh, the sample sentence to illustrate the usage of the word. Um, in addition, you might want to add a picture with the image path uh, um, to the front and to the back of the card. Um, the pictures um, and sounds we are going to cover later on in another tutorial dedicated for it. For now, let's add a new card.
Um, the tilde here represents the word uh, limpid. Uh, so, and as you are presented with the card, you're going to see the back and the example. So, the tilde is where you would know that uh, the missing word is. Um, now we have a few options. Um, uh, we can add another card by clicking on Add button or Alt dash Alt and N on your keyboard. Or we can uh, click OK to save this card or click Cancel. So we're going to add another one. So I'm going to click on Add and add another card. Um, in this particular card, uh, I want to illustrate some uh, text enhancements that you can do with Granule. Um, the Granule, the text, uh, the text uh, in Granule can be enhanced with Pongo Markup, which is a subset of XML. Uh, you can learn more about Markup language supported by consulting the help. Uh, if you click on the Help button. Um, it brings the uh, help uh, dialog uh, where you can learn all about Pango. Um, but basically, um, it's very simple um, markup language. And you have plenty of tools um, to, um, uh, to enhance the, the visual uh, feedback of your text. Um, also, there is a um, um, shortcut buttons uh, at the top which would give you some of the shortcuts um, so you can uh, if we just uh, gonna uh, go over them pretty quickly you can paste from the clipboard um, you can remove all the tags if they were already in the text uh, you can uh, enhance the visual um, visually the text um, uh, you can remove extra spaces and new lines and you can add a reference so to illustrate I want to make Gabriel an italic so as you can see I've added uh, the uh, simple markup around Gabriel and uh, since I don't know what harp means I'm going to make a reference. So I double click on, on harp, uh, select a add reference index, and uh, here my reference is going to be number one. If I say OK, um, a markup is added. So basically, harp is uh, italized, and there is a, um, an index number added to the word, and here I can add definition. So this helps you to enhance your um, your cards. Um, you can also add a uh, color, um, and one way of adding the color would be to use a uh, uh, span tag, which allows you to specify more attributes grouped together. So. Uh, span foreground would be the, the, the thing I'm looking for. So if I do um, span foreground red, uh, so my my word live uh, live would be uh, would be enhanced uh, with the color and. Uh, uh, this is about it, so I'm going to click 
okay. Um, um, and uh, now I have two cards in my deck. And uh, um, again, another tip is go ahead and save it to the deck. Uh, so this helps to protect your work if application hangs or crashes unexpectedly, which uh, is a very remote possibility. So I saved my deck. Um, uh, the deck also has a set of preferences associated with it. Um, if we click on the preferences icon, uh, we are presented with the deck preferences dialog. Um, uh, here you can specify the authorship and give a short description of your deck. Um, uh, the sound section lets you specify where your sound bits are stored. Um, you want to keep it simple and store your sounds uh, relative to where you have your deck stored on hard drive. So basically what you want to do is to say uh, enable alternative sound, record sound paths as relative, and uh, the path would be relative to where your deck is stored. So if I click on browse, uh, my deck is stored under C, my stuff, English words. Um, and uh, here I would like to create a folder called sounds. And that's where I want my sounds to be stored. So what this allows me to do, because the sound path is relative, is that I can um, archive this uh, folder with my cards and my sounds with the PKZip or any other uh, compression utility, and then distribute this particular um, you know, installation, uh, and it, it, it should be uh, working workable anywhere else. So I guess sounds, and that's the uh, relative path. Um, you can also enhance the uh, appearance by tweaking fonts and text alignment of each individual text. So the appearance uh, widget is here. If you enable it, you can change fonts and colors and uh, text alignment of all the uh, of all the text fields, so you can do multi-line and text padding and uh, picture alignment and so forth. Um, when you are done with your settings, um, click uh, apply button. Uh, and uh, now we have a deck to study. So um, you close the deck view dialog. Um, and now you are presented uh, with the card. Um, this is the front, this is the back. And if you go to the next card, you will see Piccadilla as the word and uh, 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 the answer and example would be right here. As And as you can have, have seen, we Italized Gabriel, and uh, we made a reference to harp, and uh, the tilde is highlighted, is colored red uh, by default to indicate where the word is supposed to go. So you can click on close and go back to the main dialog, and um, if you do file quit, uh, you are asked to save the deck. We have changed its preferences, so we would like to save it. Uh, 